Can you talk about Emperor Maximilian of Mexico? Yes, I absolutely can. Okay, please do so. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, actually, I was just by his tomb two days ago. Oh. In the Kaisergruft. And the interesting thing about that, the interesting thing about that is that years ago when I used to go there, there was really nothing on it. But now you go there, there are always Mexican flags and flowers and stuff. So apparently, uh, word is out to his former subjects that they can visit him here in Vienna. Um, Maximilian. Hmm? They couldn't previously? What? Well, I mean, he's always been there. I think probably um, word is out. I mean, it is... It, Obviously, either more Mexicans know about it, oh. or more Mexicans know about it and feel better about it, or something. Oh, I, I thought, I thought. Okay, I was just making sure. It almost sounded like there is per, uh, perhaps a, a politically correct repression going on no. there, where it's taboo no, no. to visit his tomb or something. Okay. It just well, I mean, mutatis mutandis. It's like when I was a boy, and you'd go to the uh, graves of the British soldiers at Concord Bridge. Mm. Uh, there was never any decoration there. It was just the stone. Now you go there, there are Union Jacks and poppies and all kinds of things. Well, similarly, there didn't used to be all these uh, offerings on Maximilian's tomb, and now there are. I see. So uh, he was the younger brother of Franz Josef of, uh, of Austria-Hungary, uh, the emperor. He married a Belgian princess named Carlotta, Charlotte. And when he was sort of in his brother's shadow, he was the reformer of the Austrian Navy. And he lived in a town called Trieste on the Adriatic in a castle called Miramare, Castello Miramare. And he and his wife were very happy, and there they were. Meanwhile, in Mexico, something strange was happening, the Civil War between the good guys, who were called, strangely enough, the conservatives, and were maintaining the church and so on, and the bad guys, who were called the liberals. And they were headed by a man called Benito Juarez. Conservatives were run by a man called Miramon. Well, the liberals were anti-clerical and wanted to take over the church's property and limit its authority. And they may have been idiots personally, but they were able to defeat the conservatives because they were heavily armed by the United States and the conservatives had no sugar daddy overseas. Well, Juarez becomes the undisputed president of Mexico. And he decided that in order to save money, Mexico was going to default on its foreign debts. Now, that really wasn't a smart idea. It never is. Is what it led to was the people they owed the money to, the British, the French, and the Spanish, deciding that's not a good plan. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll occupy Mexico's biggest port and collect all the customs dues and pay ourselves. <laughs> and in 1864, that's what they did. They showed up and they took over Veracruz. But Napoleon III, the emperor of the French, had bigger plans than just holding on to Veracruz and paying himself back. His idea was to conquer Mexico and uh, put it under a friendly regime. Well, normally, because of the Monroe Doctrine, the United States would have intervened to prevent the three powers from taking Veracruz. Mm. But the United States were busy with something called the war between the states. So they were not really in a position to pay attention to Mexico. And that was when the three powers jumped on Veracruz. Napoleon III, though, had in mind establishing a friendly realm for all of Mexico. And the British and the Spanish decided they didn't want any part of it, and they pulled out. Meanwhile, the Mexican conservatives came to uh, Napoleon III and said, look, now remember, Mexico had had an emperor immediately after independence by the name of Agustin de Iturbide, uh, who had actually been the commander of the Spanish troops. And when Spain adopted a liberal uh, constitution, he and the uh, rebel guerrillas of the hills, pardon me, the hills made a deal, and Mexico became an independent uh, an independent empire. He tried to find a European prince to take the throne. Nobody wanted it, so he became Agustin the first. And a year later, was overthrown, 
him back to Mexico after he was overthrown and was executed. So that was the first Mexican empire. But the Mexican conservatives figured that they should have a monarchy and um, asked Napoleon III to find them a suitable candidate. And he thought this would be a great idea because with French help the uh, and conservative uh, manpower, they would be able to take over Mexico and put in a, a government friendly to France and not so friendly to the United States. So he looked around and he settled on Maximilian, who was very ambitious, wasn't going to go further than he already was. Um, he jumped at the chance. He was invited to become emperor by a delegation of Mexican conservatives. And he agreed to take the job. Brother, Franz Josef, uh, agreed on the condition that he renounce his rights to the throne of Austria-Hungary, which he did. And then he set off for Mexico with some Austrian volunteers and some Belgian volunteers. I mentioned his wife was Belgian. And they went to Mexico. And the French, in the meantime, had conquered most of the country. Juarez was a refugee in a little town called uh, uh, El Paso del Norte, at the very northern end of Mexico, just south of Oro Paso. It's now called Ciudad Juarez because he was there mm. hiding. Well, anyway, long and the short of it is, uh, that 1864, the uh, conquest began, and then Maximilian was made emperor. Well, in 1865, the uh, Civil War in the United States ended. And as soon as the American government had the time to spare, they began rushing arms to Juarez, as they had done during the War of the Reform. And they pressured Napoleon III, which he did. So Maximilian was left with his own forces. I like the Mexicans in the War of the Reform, no source of ongoing funding and weaponry to compare with the United States. And so in due time, he was defeated and captured by uh, Juarez. Uh, his wife, Carlotta, had gone, to, uh, gone back to Europe to try to get aid. And the other thing I should mention is that the imperial couple realized they weren't going to be able to have children. So they adopted the grandson of the first Mexican emperor, Iturbida, as their heir. Okay. And he has, he has descendants now living in Australia. So the interesting thing is that they are... Uh, how do I put this? They're heirs both to the first and second Mexican empires. Mm, yeah, I see. So at any rate, uh, long and the short of it was that uh, Maximilian was executed at Quetetado in 1867 by Juarez. But two of his generals died with him, uh, Mejia and Miramon, who had been the president. Here's the interesting thing. Juarez offered, him, offered the generals their lives if they would abandon their emperor. Oh. And they refused and died by his side. Wow. Now, he's made some mistakes. He tried to conciliate the liberals. And all he did was erode his own support. Because the liberals were not going to be bought by him any, under any circumstances. But having said that, as, uh, as a man, he must have been something. Or I highly doubt his two generals would have died with him. His wife, unfortunately, went mad. And she lived until 1927. So she was a widow for 60 years. Ooh. That's a sad story. Yeah. And the interesting thing about it is that he, in 67, he was brought home by the same, Australia, uh, the same Austrian steamship that had brought him to Mexico. They brought his body home. Uh, and then, as we know, in 1887 or 1889, uh, Franz Josef's son, Archduke Rudolf, either killed himself or was murdered at Meierling. In 1898, his wife, the uh, uh, Empress Elizabeth, was assassinated in Geneva. And then, uh, as we know, in 1914, his nephew was assassinated at Sarajevo, knocking off the first. Is uh, 
great uh, the future Empress Zeta told the story of how uh, they, as soon as they got the news, she and her husband, the future Emperor Carl, rushed to Francois' side. And he, referring to the deaths, the, the, the old emperor, referred to the deaths of his brother, his son, his uh, wife, and now said, am I to be spared nothing? And broke into, and burst into tears, which was very unlike him. Mm. The, the, the whole, the very, very sad story.